Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. Yeah, we are late to the party, and we're over the pandemic editions of Better Late Than Never, and we're moving on to something a little bit more free. Uh, we're still under lockdown, we're still under quarantine for a bit more, actually probably quite a bit more, but we figured it's almost summer, it's already past 100 here in Arizona, so why not bust out the vacation family trip summer type films. So first on the docket for movies when you think of road trips, when you think of going on a vacation, is literally National Lampoon's Vacation. Directed by Harold Ramis, debuted in 1983, same age as me, and we've got Chevy Chase leading at the forefront to take us into what will go down as one of the best comedies of all time. Critically acclaimed, well-beloved amongst majority of the audiences out there, Vacation. And it was so popular so much that it did spawn a couple sequels and then a very forgettable reboot. But it all started with a mouse. Actually, he was a moose. What? <laughs> The Griswold family take the family truckster across the country to Wally World. Now, I love this movie because you do get that Harold Ramis charm, at least when it comes to what he brings to his type of films, and then you're putting in that amazingly talented comedy work of Chevy Chase. Yeah, I think that this movie works so well is because of everything that goes on. Um, it is essentially, you know, like Murphy's Law, um, anything that can happen uh, will happen. Just the way that he reacts to certain situations as well is just hilarious. And then them going on a road trip across the country to go to a theme park and everything that ensues in between is just a lot of fun. So let's take a look at an original trailer for Vacation now. Jingles. This summer, when you think vacation, think National Lampoon's Vacation. <laughs> See the real America. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, underpants. Hey, yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Literally friendly. jumps up. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. The Grand Canyon? It's educational. All right, let's go. <laughs> and most of all, it's fun. Uh, <laughs> the dog went on the picnic basket. <laughs> Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo, Imogene Coca, <laughs> John Candy, and Chris Spoiler. Well, are you gonna go for it? This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. Take you for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> this summer, when you think vacation. Think National Lampoon's <laughs> Vacation. That was a perfect edit right there. That was good. <laughs> Gotta check under the hood. Never got the, the dog barks at the end of that song. So, uh, Harold Ramis actually wanted Elmer Bernstein to do the score for this, but he was doing Trading Places, so they ended up getting Ralph Burns. Uh, and it's funny, Ralph Burns ended up doing my, one of my favorite Muppet movies, Muppets Take Manhattan. Uh, it does have a very 70s feel, even though this was early 80s. But the music, not just the, the soundtrack, because we know the soundtrack's great, but the music, like the score, like I really like the music for the first vacation that I felt like could never get replicated in any of the vacations. Mm -hmm. uh, although I do love Vegas Vacation as well. I do like Vegas Vacation as well too. But it does have that uh, charm when it comes to a movie being good and the music is good. Holiday Road, written for vacation and ended up uh, coining as the main theme for vacation for every film to follow. I mean, it, I can't think, when I think of that song, I think of vacation. Like, right. there's nothing else that, uh, like, so it, it has become such an iconic thing for vacation. Like, if they try to use that song in anything else, you're just like, no, it doesn't feel like it fits here. That's right. for vacation. Like, that's the song for them. It's iconic, just yeah. like the Family Truckster's iconic, too. Like, that car is locked in pop culture 
symbolism in terms of a disaster en route to a place that should be joyous, but like you said, Murphy's Law, everything could go bad. The right. family truckster is the one that'll take you there. There's a damn fine automobile. When they have the truckster and stuff, that they when you put it in different other things as far as pop culture goes, right. you get it. Like when they did, you know, the Family Guy Star Wars. Kids, you noticing all this blight? Roll them up. <laughs> yeah, you've got Beverly D'Angelo and Chevy Chase uh, so good together. Like, I, I fell in love with Beverly D'Angelo. I was a lot younger when I saw this movie, so obviously fell in love with Beverly D'Angelo. I actually liked her more than I like Christy Brinkley. No need to compare. Ellen Griswold is where it's at. Uh, and then Clark W. Griswold. Did you know, doing research for this movie, I never knew his middle name was Wilhelm? Yeah, that's interesting. You know, Clark like Wilhelm? Wil Wilhelm Griswold. Yeah. Yeah. But in pure Chevy Chase fashion, also butted heads once again with his director, Harold Ramis. And it makes me wonder because, you know, Harold Ramis also butted heads with Bill Murray when it came to Groundhog Day. So is it just the ego of these actors that tend to, you know, bump heads? Or is Harold Ramis, you know, kind of harder to work with too, to where, you know, he when asks a lot. Oh yeah, because they ask a lot. Like this movie was a very tall order to accomplish shooting across the country, secondary units. They had to scrap the entire ending and go back and reshoot it like in a small period of time. So you do hear how Chevy Chase also is though when it comes to right. creative direction and he doesn't take uh, uh, other people's opinions or other people's ideas well right. if he has a better idea in mind. I mean so much so that you had Chris Columbus where they had a falling out to or Something happened and he just couldn't deal with Chris Columbus, so Chris Columbus was out right. and he didn't film uh, Christmas Vacation. Um, so, you know, you hear that a lot. And then there was a uh, recently with Chevy Chase when it came to community and his uh, butting heads with Dan Harmon. Of course. So, there are stories out there of, you know, Chase being kind of difficult to work with. And I believe it was Harold Ramis that got a suitcase thrown at him by Chevy Chase. It could have been the other way. Yeah. But yeah, a suitcase was thrown at the other one when they were butting heads. One or the other. But I guess, you know, they maybe have that working relationship, a good relationship, it seems like, everybody with John Hughes. And John Rick Hughes actually wrote the story uh, meant for uh, National Lampoon magazine. Uh, it was called, I think, Vacation 58. And it, they ended up turning it into a movie and he even got mad about certain changes that were made to his story because it was supposed to be more so from the point of view of Rusty, but they ended up switching it to the point of view of Clark. For me, I prefer that a little bit more. Anthony Michael Hall, love him, but I prefer Chevy Chase being at the forefront. Yeah, and I think that maybe one of the reasons that they kind of put it at the forefront is Chevy Chase. I of think course. He, you yeah. know, him ha taking this role and he's like, no, nah, I want to be, you know, the center, the front of the story. And it, I, I mean, the, the way that they do it, I think that it works for the movie. Right. Because, um, you know, sometimes things don't translate very well when it comes to certain adaptations from, you know, pencil to, to you know, film. Yeah. But it's interesting that it is, it came from a short story and then it became the movie. There are, like you said, there are certain things that changed uh, in the, in the, the story that was written, they're from Detroit, but instead they're from Chicago because John Hughes. Yeah, John Hughes. <laughs> and then in the written story, they were going to Disneyland, but obviously they can't go to Disneyland, right. so they had to create their uh, fictional uh, amusement park in Wally World. Funny enough, Disneyland's excuse for why they want, didn't want to do it. Uh, aside from, you know, not wanting to be tarnished in terms of whatever comedy was going to get thrown their way, uh, we don't close any of the 365 days a year. Times change. Yeah. Disneyland's closed. <laughs> but yeah, that was their thing is they don't close, so it's not a thing for them. They don't have an off season, or at least at that time. They now, do that now. Yeah, now it's a little different, but yeah. that's why we're going on vacation to Wally World. And I do love the poster for this movie too. Back when movie posters were works of art. So the movie poster is definitely a riff of Conan the Barbarian, and you do get a lot of the same that that uh you know that fantasy type hero with the damsels that is feet you know it's such a quest that Clark has to overcome and they just illustrate it so perfectly on the poster I remember walking through video stores and seeing it it's like you know what movie it was right. based on the cover then you get that more generic one later on for the DVDs and the blu-rays right. but man they were very artistic very similar to like what Drew Struzan would do with the Star Wars posters right. so 
I mean, it's definitely one of those iconic things that come with this movie, not just the music, not just the visual imagery, the jokes, the lines, the quotes, but the poster as well. So one of the best things about this movie, too, the introduction of Uncle Eddie to the vacation universe. We didn't realize it'd be a universe at that point, That's true. but Randy Quaid as Uncle Eddie is perfection. All the scenes he has with Clark, introducing him to his family, Gene Krakowski as Cousin Vicky, like everything about that very small scene just echoed through vacation history after that. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, at, at Uncle Eddie, I think my favorite, like, parts of Uncle Eddie comes later on into the series and not necessarily in vacation because it sure he his character does kind of evolve more and more you find out more and more about his character as the series goes on but I love Uncle Eddie in Christmas Vacation I think that his ev evolution to that it is hilarious and then of course you get him again in Vegas Vacation and it just <laughs> goes over the top there. He's just very naive and very uh, down on his luck when it comes to his financial circumstances. Yep. Until Vegas vacation and you realize the man knows how to save. Yeah and you know when you kind of think about vacation and you you research a lot of things when it comes behind the scenes. Uh, one thing that popped out in my mind uh, when it came to it was the fact that you know they some of the actors got sick. I had a bad experience on this ride once before. What happened? I threw up. If you think about it, they have to ride those roller coasters like so over many and times over. and over and over so that they can get different shots, different angles uh, to use in the movie. So, uh, you know, my, uh, Anthony Michael Hall. Anthony died. Michael Hall was terrified as well, but they had to ride him like five, six times. And then Dana Barron, who played Audrey, like was super sick from all the riding of the roller coasters because. Man, you imagine, you gotta get that shot as many times as it takes. And right. those Six Flags roller coasters, man, they are definitely not ones that you wanna mess around with, uh, especially after, you know, days of shooting and multiple ride throughs, so. Right, um, one of the, my favorite scenes, and it's a very small scene too, uh, and it, it's not really significant, but to me it is, is when they get to Wally World and they're in the parking lot and they park all the way in the <laughs> back and he's like, first one in, first one yeah. out. So uh, We do that all the time. Yeah. Anytime we enter an empty parking lot, like we always make the joke. Uh, we always try and park farther towards the exit if we can help it. And at the end of the day, when the lot's all full and everybody's fighting to get out of here, we'll be the first ones out too, right? So it's, uh, you know, the Clark Griswold mentality. That whole scene where they're running down the parking lot uh, with the chariots of fire. It's such a good moment and to, to be taken away, the rug pulled out from under you. Guys, if you ever want to see any of these filming locations for this entire movie beginning to end, check out Adam the Woo's video vacation filming location video it's amazing so we'll put a link down in the description of this video but he goes to all the places that they shot that are still around that you can actually get up close to and put together a hell of a video so uh, I always love seeing that it wasn't even at like Six Flags they did it at a, a raceway park and that's where they ended up having that parking lot uh, all the images of Wally World were actually just matte paintings put over it so you know they got clever in the 80s when it came yeah. the 70s and the 80s when it came to those big shots, they're not CG. Right. You know, it was a beautiful matte painting. They had to and you couldn't improvise. Tell. Oh yeah. So the ending was very different when it came to vacation that they had originally planned. But of course, due to test audiences, they ended up scrapping it and doing the ending that we all know. But essentially, it was very similar to Christmas Vacation. They decided to take the gun and go to the creator, the owner of Wally World, and that was Roy Wally. They go to his house, and you know, they force them to entertain his family because of Wally World being closed. And then they had the SWAT team come, which is, like you said, very similar to what happened in Christmas Vacation. Right. And then uh, you had Christy Brinkley actually coming in, you finding out her identity as well in right. this, and she is a Wally, yeah. which is really <laughs> weird. So I'm glad that they didn't do that at the yeah. end. And then, of course, you get them where they go back on a plane on their way home, but they're going the wrong way. So Clark tries to hijack the plane, and it just seems like a really weird ending. So I'm glad that they, the test audience out there was like, nope, and they went and redid that shot and 
have a better ending. And that's one of the charms, I think, of Vacation, is they never push the envelope too far. It's very grounded. Um, yes, they ended up utilizing the kidnapping and the SWAT team showing up in Christmas Vacation, but it felt like an escalation of what they already did in Vacation at that point. So they weren't jumping the shark just yet. And then when it came down to Christy Brinkley's character, we didn't need that fit that service to her character at the very end. She had it. It was fine. Like, her story ended at the hotel, and then again comes up again in Vegas Vacation for just a smidge. But we didn't really need uh, that much to the ending. The ending is very simple. I love when you hear Harold Ramis down at the end. We're all finished here, Mr. Wally. You want me to take him downtown and book him? You do end up getting that really nice Roy Wally who emanates Roy Disney and Walt Disney. He's very caring. He understands, like, talking about going to Florida. Well, Florida never closes. Like, they have such a good moment together where he understands and lets them go. Forget it, officer. <laughs> I'm not gonna press any charges. Ow! Such a good evolution to the situation without going crazy over the top and that's what I love about vacation. I think it's also funny that they named him Roy Wally because I, right. I, I'm pretty sure maybe they did. We're like, well, Roy Disney. Of course, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it made a lot of sense. Uh, I love going. Wally. <laughs> I love going to uh, Six Flags to check out. You know, they still have the revolution there, um, but they ended up taking down Colossus. Um, well, they changed Colossus. Can I say though? So before I ever watched this movie, um, I was like maybe like six or seven years old when sure. I first watched the movie but before I watched the movie I remember people talking about Wally World but when they said Wally World it was for Walmart like they would say oh we're going to Wally World we're going to Walmart so when we watched the movie and they were giving me like oh this is a movie of them trying to get to the theme park Wally World and I'm like Walmart has a theme park <laughs> but it was just so funny watching that and then realizing oh okay the just the theme park is called Wally World but it just it made me laugh. A lot of memorable moments, a lot of memorable quotes, um, and even things that I forgot or didn't realize were changed. I had no clue in the theatrical version versus this, the movie that ended up getting released on, on DVD and Blu-ray that the music that they play when Chrissy Brinkley's pulling up on him, I remember it being, I'm so excited. I'm so very, very vividly remember it being I'm so excited, but then I guess later it changed to Little Boy Sweet, and it's funny because I remember Little Boy Sweet too. Like I remember both I'm so excited Little Boy Sweet very well in both those scenes, and I didn't realize that you you can't even find the one right now that has the I'm so excited in it because it's Little Boy Sweet, but yet the part at the park when he's like kissing the sandwich and he spits it out, to me that feels Little Boy Sweet. When she's pulling up in the car next to him, that's I'm so excited. That's how I've always heard it. But in terms of what's out now, it's Little Boy Sweet apparently the entire time. I never knew that there was a switcheroo when it came to the music of the film. But either way, guys, what did you think of Vacation? Which vacation is your favorite vacation? You can tell us down in the comments below. Still no Travis, he's quarantined away until this all blows over. But thank you guys, you can also like and subscribe. And do the thing on our Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, start All the social networking gin joints, you know where they are. Check out our Christmas vacation reaction, retro reaction, available on our channel as well. Click the thing in the corner, that'll take you right to it. Or go in the description of this video to get you there. Kick into the party, fuel the party, keep the party going on our Patreon. Thanks so much, and as always, now it's time to say goodbye. This party is over. Bye. Bye.